Thanks a lot for being here. Uh, I think we should start talking about your breakout, breakout role for us. Really critical. How did you land the part? Was the process? Because, well, uh, Kate's a very unique character. I think they must have looked for lots and lots and lots of actresses. Tell us about, about this process. I wasn't really involved in that process, but I've heard this story, so I can share it with you. Um, so apparently, J.J. Uh, Abrams and his producing team had been looking for Kate um, all over the world. Um, they had been receiving tapes from different countries and they had, of course, been combing L.A. and um, hadn't found anybody yet and were starting to panic because they were going to start shooting very, very soon in Hawaii and they needed a Kate. Um, and at that time, what some of you might not know about Lost, which is cool, a little cool bit of Lost trivia, Kate was the main character of the show. Jack died in the pilot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, kill Jack! <laughs> you just want a woman to lead the show. I get it. I get it. Um, and, and so I was um, doing my very first pilot season. It was my very first time going out for auditions in Vancouver, Canada um, for television shows that had not yet been created. It's what they call pilot season. And so my first audition was in January of 2004 and in March of 2004 I was in Hawaii shooting Lost. So it just happened very, very, very quickly. Uh, apparently the story is that JJ saw a video um, of me, the tape that had been sent in, and um, knew immediately that's that's my Kate. Um, and then I had to go to LA and do the test and all that. What was kind of strange and ironic about the whole thing was after. So, do any of you act? No. Okay, oh, yeah, there's one. Make some yeah, noise if you act. Actors are loud. Come on, make some noise. That's a lot of actors. So, I I went and did this audition. I was reading these sides and there was supposedly this thing in the jungle and we were stranded on a deserted island and I was like, this is the stupidest piece of material I have ever auditioned for. And then I did probably what I thought was the worst audition of my life. So I was saying to the casting director, oh, wait, let, let's just do it again. That was awful. She was like, yeah, that was kind of awful. Let's do it again. And we did that three or four times until we finally concluded you're never gonna get this part, let's just give it up and move on. And I left. And then I got a call three days later saying they want you to come back and now here I am. Ten years later. Unique uh, recording process because it was a lot of episodes and you guys had to live in Hawaii a long time. How was it for you to, to, to experience that and had to move uh, to another country, to, to an island? And How many of you want to move away from Brazil? Wow. <laughs> What's wrong with you? <laughs> differently. How many of you want to stay in Brazil forever? <laughs> Not very many. What? Okay. Okay. I gotta start again. Imagine you lived in Canada. It was not like what you would imagine. Oh, I'm in paradise and I love it and it's amazing. That was all the rest of the cast because they were American. And it took me a very long time to adjust. It was a difficult time. It was my first speaking role. I'd never done a part in film or television. There was so much pressure. I was late every day to work because I'd get lost. And that's really embarrassing when the entire production of like 500 people is waiting for you to arrive to work so they can get started. It was very, very stressful. It was kind of a hard time for me. That first season, by the end of the first season, I was doing press in New York, we were um, promoting the, the show, and I was sitting in a bathtub in a hotel room on the phone, bawling to my parents, saying, I just want to come home, I want to quit. And of course, my parents, in true Canadian fashion,
Russian said, oh, screw those guys and come home and we'll feed you chicken noodle soup. <laughs> Who would it be? And I used to always say Claire because I would love to get to be a mommy and play with babies all the time. And then my wish came true and I got to be a mommy and play with kids all the time. And there was this one little boy who ended up um, playing Aaron the most. Uh, the little boy Aaron. Of course the babies are always different babies, but the little boy was the same little boy all the time. And those were probably some of my best um, episodes to work on the show because it's just it just takes you out of the work when you're working with an adorable sweet little two or three year old boy it was it was great but did I expect it no I didn't expect the convent on the convict on the run to end up becoming a mama yeah that was very awful awesome. <laughs> no I'm not talking about Jack or Sawyer all right let's play the game again <laughs> Jack. <laughs> Brazil hates Jack. <laughs> you know why? It's because you're all cowboys. You all like that rough and, you know, red kind of thing. Awesome. Uh, well, we move from Lost. I mean, you're like Sawyer. <laughs> How many of you don't care? That's great. That's great. And, uh, well, you said that. It's one of my favorite films that I've ever been in, and I, I think it was really sort of it, it missed people. Like I just was like, how is this not a huge, crazy hit? Because I just thought it was a great movie for the whole family. Yeah. And uh, how, how it was to do well? What, what was it for, for you know, interpreting that role? What did you think of it? The thing I really liked about that character was she was so clearly strong without having to beat anyone up, which I've done a lot of in my career. And I thought it was cool that it, just in the way that she supports and challenges Hugh Jackman's character, that she is clearly a very strong woman. And I think often in real life, that is how women demonstrate their strength. They restrain from hurting other people, men, help people mature and develop and grow in themselves and I think that's an incredible show of strength. What was the process uh, with Marvel? Uh, how, how did you get the role and what were they looking for when they talked to you? I shouldn't were admit they inspired these by Kate when they were looking I for I should a not admit these things in this room. <laughs> Don't kill me. I got a call from my agent saying Marvel are interested in you for their next big superhero franchise. Um, and I was like, I don't want to do a superhero movie. And then they were like, okay, well, um, you know, Edgar Wright would be directing it and um, Paul Rudd would be starring in it. And I was like, huh? script and I gotta meet these people because that's weird. That's not what you would expect out of a superhero film. I'm intrigued. And then I was like, I guess I better watch a Marvel film. <laughs> and see what these guys are up to. What all the hype's about. And so I watched some Marvel films and I was like, hell yeah, I want to do this movie. What was the what was the, the first Marvel movie you watched? The, or the one that when you watched it said, yeah, now I want to do the part. Well, the truth is, the first Marvel movie I watched, I didn't know it was a Marvel movie because this was before Marvel became God. <laughs> I watched Iron Man 1. Like idea that you know they were all these great movies were made by the same people and I hadn't seen most of the other ones or almost any of the other ones I don't think I'd never seen an Avengers film and those are really cool um, but I think that was what sold me was when I watched the Avengers film I went oh man 
if I could ever, because originally the, I didn't know if my character would become a superhero, but I was like, if I just get my foot in the door, and then they watch the last Hobbit film and see me kick some ass. <laughs> Keeping secrets, they have not told me, but wouldn't it be cool if I like went after my mom? And wouldn't it be really effing cool if my mom was played by Michelle Pfeiffer? <laughs> job in the world because I was a huge Hobbit fan and for anyone to depict Bilbo Baggins as Bilbo Baggins the way I imagined him was such a huge weight to carry and he did it superbly I, I was like that's Bilbo, that's from that's from my head and that, that was amazing that he was able to do that I had zero confidence that I could do that for any of the album characters because they were they're angels they're they're just too perfect and I am not and so I was excited about the idea of this character that we could just create from scratch and nobody had an already preconceived idea of what she should be like. And then I got to be a part of the creation and I got to work with uh, Philippa and Fran on the writing and, and the creation of that character, which was really exciting for me. And then the other thing was like the fan situation, <laughs> which was a situation, um, when they first called me and said, we want you to be an elf in The Hobbit, I was like, no! <laughs> since I was like 13 and by the way in 2004 or 5 when I was at the Golden Globes and Peter Jackson had just won everything for Return of the King he met me for the first time and was like man if I had met you five years ago I would have cast you as an elf I never imagined in a million years that ten years later he would cast me as an elf it was awesome but then they said but she's not in the book and I was like hell no no way, the fans will lynch me. And then I started 
started thinking about it and I realized it's Peter Jackson. I know what he created with Lord of the Rings and I would trust him completely to create something new for this book. And then I also thought, I like being at the center of controversy. <laughs> Nobody's talking about because they're like, oh yeah, they were good. You want to be the character that people are like, I loved her, or like, I hated her! Get her out of the movie! And what do you think about the adaptation from the There were things that I would desperately wanted to see that didn't show up on screen. And there were things that showed up on screen that I was like, huh? This one in a book, including myself. Um, the thing that I missed the most, because when they told me I was going to be playing an elf, of course, I knew immediately. You didn't know immediately, but I knew immediately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew which elves they were talking about. And I was most excited for the opening sequence, when, when the dwarves first stumble upon the elves, and the elves are tricking them deeper and deeper into Markwood with their festivities and the, the flickering lights in the, in the woods and I was like, oh, like I, have, I have goosebumps right now talking about it. Sorry, I am a token geek. And I, like, I... Thank you! Make those humping movements. 